What's going on? I went ahead and wrapped the interior trim of my WRX with brushed steel textured vinyl and I wanted to share my installation. This is going to show you what you can expect and how to make your own installation go smoother. Let's get to it. Here you can see everything we're going to need to get this job done. These are all the trim pieces that I'm going to be wrapping and I'm going to be wrapping them with this brushed steel vinyl. This brushed steel vinyl has brush strokes running vertically on the vinyl itself and that's important because if you're wrapping a long piece like this and you want the brush strokes to run horizontally on the piece then this is not going to reach because it's not long enough. So you have to either get a piece of vinyl wide enough to cover the longest piece that you want to wrap or you have to get a piece of vinyl that has the brush strokes running in the direction that you wanted. In this case, it would be horizontally. That's not gonna be a problem if you're using a solid color. Now, my vinyl came in a kit and it came with a little tube of primer. I'll explain that in a little bit. But it also came with a squeegee with a felt tip. And this is so that you don't damage the vinyl as you're installing it. You're also gonna need some alcohol and a rag to wipe the pieces before you start your installation. An X-Acto knife to cut the trim on the back of the pieces. A heat gun. You can do it with a blow dryer, but a heat gun is much more effective for the job and it has a lot of other uses, so it's good to have laying around. And to make the job easier, if you have some painter's tape laying around and a piece of cardboard so you don't damage the surface you're working on. First thing I'm gonna do is cut a piece of vinyl to size. I'm gonna anchor it with a piece of painter's tape. You don't have to do this, it just helps. Then you can position the piece where it's gonna go. You're gonna want about a one inch border around the particular piece that you're cutting. Keep in mind that if you have textured vinyl to cut the piece according to which direction you want the texture to go. So in my case, I want it to go this way. So I'm going to place it just like this with a one inch border around. Now it'd be nice if the vinyl had a grid in the back to kind of show you the line so you can align properly. All it has are these little markers. So that's basically what you have to go by. You don't have to worry about that obviously if you have a solid color, but if you have textured, then you do have to worry about that. So preparation is going to be the most important part of this entire job. So when you remove your pieces of trim from your car, if you have any sort of residue on them, any waxy residue, make sure you clean the piece with like soapy warm water. That way you can remove all the wax and strip it and make the surface as pure as possible. And to get it completely ready, we're going to give it a good cleaning with alcohol. And this is going to get all the contaminants out and it's going to get the surface ready to accept the adhesive on the back of the vinyl. So you're just going to wipe it down. Don't forget to do the edges on the inside of the piece because that's where the vinyl is going to wrap around. With the vinyl position where it's going to go, you can start getting the high areas. You don't have to do it very hard right now because you might have to do this right here that I'm doing. All right, before I get much further, I want to show you something. This step right here is not mandatory. This primer is going to help the adhesive on the back of the vinyl really, really grip onto the piece. This is not meant to go on the entire surface of the piece that you're covering. This is only meant to go on the very edges where the vinyl is going to wrap around. Basically, it's going to make your installation last longer. You can buy these separate if you want, or like I said, these can come in the kit. You don't need them, but they do help. If you do get them, there's a black dot right there there's a capsule inside with a primer. So you have to crush that black dot to release the primer onto the applicator right there. Also another thing to keep in mind, if you take off the vinyl in the future, the primer can leave a residue behind. Okay, you crush that piece. It smells very strong, okay? So this inside edge is gonna be the hardest part of this piece. So I like to start with the hardest part. All I'm doing is taking the applicator and going around the perimeter of that inside edge. By the way, this applicator is a one-time use. It's not going to last more than a day because it'll dry out. So just keep that in mind too. We'll let that dry. There's a lot of tension in this middle part right here. And that's because of this gap in here. There's a bridge going on from this side to this side. You can see that right there. There's a bridge, right? When you have situations where there's a bridge like that, what you want to do is minimize the tension on the corners. And the way you do that is by starting down the middle and then working your way outward. If you start it on this side, you're going to cause too much tension on this side and vice versa. So we're just going to heat the piece in the middle. It's important to apply a lot of pressure on this. That way you can prevent air bubbles. 
So you can see what I'm talking about. Now you have all of that tension in these two edges right here. When it comes to vinyl, heat is your friend, but you don't want to overstretch the vinyl. So make sure you only use the heat when you absolutely need it. And if you're working like I am with your fingers, make sure that your nails don't scratch up the vinyl. You can't scratch it. So I'm being very careful here. And we're basically gonna do the same thing going around the piece. So I'm gonna heat it in the middle and kind of work my way that way and back this way. All right, so I'm gonna turn the piece over here in a second, but before I do, I wanna make absolutely certain that there's no trapped bubbles of air anywhere. So I'm gonna give it a good look, especially in the corners where there was a lot of tension. So I'm really paying a lot of attention to this corner here and that corner there, and these corners, and I don't see any air anywhere. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna cut out a hole down the middle to relieve some of that tension in here so I can finish wrapping the corners. These corners are nice and rounded, so I shouldn't have a problem stretching the vinyl over them without having to cut deep slits in it. When you cut to relieve the tension, make sure you leave yourself about an inch working surface because remember, you're gonna have to wrap the vinyl around. It's better to be conservative with these slits rather than overdo it and find out later. So if you wanna cut more after you start heating, then you could do that, but if you cut too much and you bring it to the corner, then you can't fix it. I'll start with this surface here because I have a good way to hold it on this side. So you want to pull a little bit and stretch. Just a slightly stretch, not too much. You don't want to overdo it with the stretching. If you get to the point where there's too much tension, we'll cut a slit again. I'm gonna cut a little slit here because there's a little tension there. So we're gonna end up wrapping that around, but we just have to be patient and do it slowly. From this point, it's basically rinse and repeat. Keep applying heat so that the vinyl remains pliable. If you try to stretch it while it's cold, you can easily rip it. The goal here is to wrap the vinyl around the rim and then once we're done, we can trim the excess. This requires a bit of patience, so take your time and you'll be okay. Once you're satisfied, you can go ahead and use the X-Acto knife to cut all that excess off. Make sure you use your fingernails to kind of push the vinyl tightly around that edge there where we put the primer. Now a lot of people don't show the backs when they're doing these on videos. And it's probably because it just never looks good, but it doesn't matter. The back is the back. You're never going to see the back. Just make sure that you don't end up covering the clips because obviously you need to put the piece back on the car. So what matters is how it looks from the front. And that looks great. So we're gonna go ahead and do the outside. Now the outside corner is easier than the inside corners. Now the corners are the hardest part to do. We're gonna heat it up and then we're gonna kind of spread the corner out so that neither side it has too much material. So we're gonna basically spread the material evenly on both sides. So I'm gonna just heat it up and I'm gonna grab it and at an angle, pull it over this. Heat is your friend. If it doesn't look good, you can pull it back out and do it again.
See right there? It doesn't look bad at all already. So hit it with heat. When you hit it with heat, it kind of wraps around the corner. And that's when it wraps and it doesn't, you know, come off, that's when you know you're good. Okay. So that's, you know, that's that's good right there. Especially with a primer, that's not going anywhere. Just a little bit. Okay. That's good there. So that doesn't look bad. And that doesn't show anyways, but it doesn't look bad. I'll do the same thing on this side. If you got too much material, just cut it to make it easier to work with. pushing the vinyl onto that edge make sure we have a solid connection there and then we'll cut the excess off I hope this video at least motivates you to take on your own wrapping project. I've done this a handful of times and every time it comes out better. With a little patience you can transform your car to suit your own taste. Be sure to leave the video a like if it was useful to you and consider subscribing for more content just like this. Thank you so much for watching and take care.